Well, welcome back to State of the Nation, and I'm sorry I missed you yesterday. I was trying to preserve and protect the Constitution. The Conservative Party scored 19% in a recent YouGov poll compared to the Labour Party at 48%. And the next election poses fundamental questions for my party. But it all comes down to one thing, one question. What does it mean to be a Conservative? As when Moses parted the Red Sea today, the sun has parted haze and confusion of political fog surrounding this question. The answer lies in reuniting the right. What we need is a big, open and comprehensive offer to those in reform. We had this in 2010 to the Liberals, who are hardly our soulmates. But most members of reform, not a million miles away from most Conservative voters and members politically. So the Prime Minister should offer candidate selection to senior members of the Reform Party, such as the estimable Ben Habib, Richard Tyson, of course, the one and only Nigel Farage. The Sun's poll has today revealed that if Nigel were to re-enter politics with the Reform Party, they would reach 16% in the polls, just a smidgen, just 5% behind the Tories at 21% in the same poll. When putting these percentages together, it gets us to 37% to Labour's 41. Now, it's not as simple as that, of course, and you know that, and it doesn't take into account. In addition, it would send such a clear message to the electorate of unity of purpose. And the message here is that we've answered the question of what it means to be Conservative. It means slashing net migration down to the tens of thousands because every electoral mandate since 2010 has promised precisely this. It means stopping the small boats and securing our borders. It means leaving the oppressive jurisdiction of the European Court of Human Rights because the British people have had enough of foreign courts extending their powers to interfere in our sovereignty. It means restoring power to elected and accountable politicians who represent you and taking back the powers of the quangocracy. This is everything from the OBR to Natural England to the Climate Change Committee. It means rolling back the disastrous green agenda, enabling cheap energy, get onto the Falklands in a moment, and granting freedom of choice for British consumers. It means rolling back the unproductive legacy of new Labour by abolishing the Equality Act, which has paved the way for wasteful wokery in both the public and private sector. It means building more beautiful homes across the country, slashing the overreaching powers of the labyrinthine planning system. It means implementing supply-side reforms that would unleash Britain's latent growth and lead to cuts in personal and corporation taxes, whilst cutting trade tariffs to enable cheaper goods for consumers, putting consumers, voters, people first. That is what voting for a Conservative government would mean at the next election if we manage this great offer. And it's our only chance of climbing this electoral mountain. For too long, we've ignored our voters because of a fundamental lack of identity. When the largest electoral mandate in British history passed in favour of Brexit in 2016, it represented so much more than just leaving the European Union. It represented a vote of confidence in the nation-state over unelected and unaccountable supranational bureaucracies. It represented a rejection of mass migration, a rejection of the elite who for too long ignored the British national identity in favour of globalisation. The Conservative Party must represent these people, the very people who gave us, who lent us their support to give us an 80-seat majority in 2019. With the help of Nigel Farage in a Conservative government as a Conservative minister, with Boris Johnson probably returning as Foreign Secretary and welcoming the likes of Ben Habib and Richard Tice into our party, as well as pursuing genuinely Conservative policies, winning the next election suddenly becomes within reach. As ever, let me know your thoughts, mailmog at gbnews.com.